Yo, 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 it's Overflow. What's going on, you guys? How are you guys doing today? First things first about the gameplay. It's going to be some Call of Duty. It's going to be absolutely awesome. I hope that you guys definitely enjoy that. And we got a story time video for you guys. It's actually kind of different than a normal story. It's going to be a story time video with some advice attached to it. I want to bring you guys stories, but I also kind of want to, like, teach you guys a little bit of something. Like, maybe... You guys don't have to listen to me, obviously, but if I could, like, impact some of you guys and make you think, oh, a little bit differently, and maybe help some of you guys out, I definitely do want to do that in my own freaking kind of helpful way, if you know what I'm saying. It's going to be a dope story. I hope that you guys definitely enjoy it. It's going to be awesome. Make sure that you guys smash the likes. We got over 700 likes on the last story. We got, like, 500 likes on the story before that or something along those lines. It's been absolutely crazy. If we could smash even 400 likes on this video, that would be so amazing, you guys. We're about to hit 40,000 subscribers. Subscribers, um, probably today. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. You're gonna hit forty thousand. What? It's crazy, crazy man. So make sure that you smash the likes on this video. Four hundred likes will be awesome. Check the likes. Check the likes. Are they there? Are they there? Four hundred? Not four hundred? Oh, okay. Leave a like then, man. What are you doing? Leave a like. Let's go ahead and deal with this freaking thing. What's up, flows? Do you knows? I love all of you. This is gonna be a story about a douchebag. And how to deal with douchebags and deal with deal with douches, <laughs> douche. So it's gonna be great. It's gonna be super great, you guys. I'm sure that we all know people like this that are douches in our day to day lives, and that's just how it happens. So this story is going to be taking place um, a couple years ago, probably like two, three years ago. Actually, you know what? Yeah, it probably took place like four years ago, man, to be honest with you guys. But still, I know this guy to this day. And right now, me and this dude are like best buddies. So I haven't seen him in a good minute, actually, before he actually stopped training. But we're, I consider him one of my best friends still at this academy. This goes back when I started doing jujitsu. So if you guys don't know me, I believe that I started boxing when I was about eight. Um, that's my That was my introduction into any type of combat sports. And I started jujitsu when I was 15. Did jujitsu on and off through high school. And then when I hit 18, um, about 18, 19 years old, I got back into jujitsu full time and I started training all the time every day. I was there literally morning and night. I was there like six hours a day. And it was absolutely awesome. But while I was there, there was a, and there's a lot of people, you know, typically there's people of all calibers there. There's people who are douches, people who are nice, people who are mean. And remember, this is a combat. Um, sport. This is a fighting style. This is a martial art. This is a place where people could really get hurt. You know what I mean? So you don't really want to be fighting dudes that are jerks, you know? And for the most part, uh, jujitsu is grappling. So it's it's like wrestling and throws and takedowns and arm bars and neck chokes and cranks and stuff like that. So this stuff is pretty serious. And while I was at this jujitsu place, there was a guy that just eh, kind of most people knew as a douche. You know what I mean? Most people knew him as being kind of a douche and it was just so frustrating and you know what we're not gonna we're not gonna go ahead and say his real name we'll go ahead and call him uh nilla nilla wafer because that sounds absolutely hilarious and his name starts with an n and if you watch this he knows who he is so <laughs> mr nilla mr nilla wafer all right was the biggest douchebag ever you guys he was just you would roll with him and if you went hard with him at all like if you tried to tap him out he would get so like upset and frustrated with you and he would like crank the arm bar when he got you and you know he'd hurt your arm or he you know choke you an extra couple seconds just to prove a point like this is what he would do like maybe if he got to a position where he could like jam his elbow into you he would do that and he was pretty good he was he was better than i was for sure by a, a good bit and still to this day like he flew through the ranks so fast he got so good at fighting so quickly because he was he was there even more than i was there man and so it was just the weirdest thing. It was like a lose-lose situation. You would go with this guy, and either you would lose, or you would try to win, and then he would be a douchebag to you, be mean to you, and then beat you. You know what I mean? So that's what he would do. And, like, it got to the point where I hated going to the class because I would always get partnered up with him, like, at some time during the, during the training. And I just really disliked going with him. Like, I didn't want to talk to him. And for the record, he was about... Probably like 5'8", so he wasn't tall at all, but he was kind of a stocky black dude. And um, he always smelled great, though. He always smelled like Swishers. He smelled absolutely delicious. I don't know what it is, um, but if you get a, like, a fine-smelling black dude, no homo. <laughs> but they always smell so good, man, and it's, it's great. And jujitsu, jitsu you're, and anybody who wrestles would know this. You get pretty close to people. So for me personally, like I, I, don't, I don't deal with no homo stuff. Like Nothing is homo to me. Like I've, I have had no homo. 
dude's nuts pressed up against my face um, because they try to get out of position or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, no homo, you guys. But anybody who wrestles knows what that's like, man. You get in some awkward positions, bro. <laughs> so I don't have no problem saying that somebody smelled delicious, and he did. But big douche, and my friend actually used to train with me, and this dude, uh, Nilla Wafers, has a son that's like, at the time was like 10 years old or something, and my friend was about my age, and he was rolling with Nilla Wafers' son, and he was going very, very slow and very comfortable and just kind of playing around, letting him get in and out of positions, like he'd put him in a leg lock and then the dude would get out, or he'd put him in an arm bar and let the little kid get out, and that's how it was, you know, it was, it was, he was being very chill with him. And I was sitting on the sidelines, and I heard Nilla Wafer saying, Oh, that dude better not mess with my son. He better not mess with him, cause, cause I'll, uh, I'll pop his knee. You know, I'll do this, I'll do that. And it was, it was pretty crazy. And another time, like I had brought, and I didn't really say anything. I was just like, God, what a douchebag. <laughs> you know, like you can clearly tell that my friends just letting the kid work positions. Um, you know, trying to get moves done and stuff like that. Like, why are you being such a dick about it, dude? And one time, I had brought in like another one of my friends, and my friend was a big guy. Like my friend was probably at the time as big as i am now so my friend was probably like or he's probably bigger dude he's probably like six one six two and like he was probably like 220 and it, my friend had never done jujitsu before never done wrestling he came in and um my this douchebag dude was just such a dick to him like he which is so rude like i think my friend uh didn't even know any moves and the dude nil wafer was just so rude to him, man, and just really uh, went all out and just beat him, beat him up, basically, really messed up, and um, one time I had even rolled with him, and I, like, went for an ankle lock, and he's like, oh, you're gonna go for an ankle lock? Those are the easiest moves, bro. Yeah, maybe they're easy, but they're also hard to pull off, so shut up, and, like, after that, he ankle locked me and, like, held it longer than he should have, and I was like, dude, what the hell, man? What the heck are you doing, bro? What are you doing, bro? That's not cool, man, like... Oh, man, that just made me mad thinking about that. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> but, God, people are such douchebags sometimes, man. I don't get it. And so I was so upset about this for the longest time, man. I was like, I don't even want to roll with this guy. Like, I asked my professor, yo, like, I don't really want to roll with him, man. And a lot of people didn't want to do that. So my instructor was like, that's totally cool. And anyways, I uh, ended up one day, I think I ended up just rolling with him anyway. And during this time, rather than me, like, taking it so personally, and rather than me being like, man, this guy just hates me, rather than that, I just was like, you know what? Teach me that move. Teach me this. Show me what you're doing, because he was good, you know what I mean? Even though he was a douche, he was good. And I was like, show me what you're doing, bro. Show me uh, how you're doing this, how are you pulling this off, let me know. And from that point on, like, he showed me that move, and even though he was still mean to me, like, he ended up teaching me so much stuff over the course of the next, like, like year he taught me so like i acquired so much of my game from him dude like so much of my fighting game now is still based on stuff that he taught me and like after you know a month of him being a, a douche to me then he started to like like me and he would i mean obviously he was teaching me stuff and you know i, I feel like there's a lot of situations where people just want to be appreciated like even though they're kind of mean they want to have respect and they want to be appreciated and even though it's hard to Sometimes, like, especially people do this all the time with, like, cops and stuff. People are like, oh, well, I don't got to do this for that stupid cop. Like, sure, you can think that in your head, but when the cop pulls you over, kiss his butt a little bit. I, granted, I'm a beautiful, freaking beautiful guy over here. I'm Mexican-Italian, and I'm very white-looking, man. I got colored eyes and all this stuff. You guys seen me in my Omega videos. But I've only got a ticket once. I've been pulled over, like, eight times because as soon as the officer comes up, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I, I know exactly what I did wrong. Uh, you know, I'm sorry about that. I deserve the ticket. Um, I think the last time I got pulled over, a cop was like, he was like, what, what do you think you're doing, man? You're driving this fast through, I think I was driving like five miles over the speed limit of the school zone, or ten miles or something like that. I, I didn't even see the school zone because it's like 20 feet long. And he's like, what do you think you're doing, bro? What, what, do, you, what do you think? You're going to just drive through the school zone? And I was like, I'm so sorry. You know, I was on my way. I was actually on the way to my school. And I was like, yo, I, I was on the way to school. I'm sorry. I actually didn't even see it. You know, um, it's crazy. And he's like, uh... You know, you could you could seriously hurt somebody, blah, blah, I'm going to have to write you this ticket. And, like, as he was writing the ticket, I was like, no, yo, I, like, I get it. Like, I deserve that. Um, uh, what did I say? He was, like, out there without a jacket. I was like, aren't you cold? You know, because it was, like, 30 degrees. I was like, dude. I was like, bro, you know, are, are you, are you, aren't you cold, man? Like, out here without a jacket and stuff. And he's like, yeah, it's pretty cold. And I was like... It's like, bro, if you want to, I mean, since I'm already late for school, I could stop by the, my sister works at the Starbucks right here. I'll go grab you a coffee, man. I'll bring it back to you. Um, you know, whatever. Did I want, like, first off, he's giving me a ticket. Like, do you think that I was really happy about that? No. 
but I gotta understand the other dude's perspective as well, and he was like, no, nah, you don't have to give me a coffee, man, I, you, you know what, I don't even want to write this ticket, you go ahead, just go, just make sure you're going slow through school zones, and like, in that situation, I have so many friends that will be like, man, are you seriously gonna give me a ticket, bro, is that what you're gonna do, god, I hate this, I hate cops, and like, wow, like, you really think that's gonna make the situation better? Like, push your pride aside, because now you're being the douche. You know what I mean? Just a quick little side story. But, anyway, sometimes you gotta kiss people's butts a little bit. It doesn't mean that you're weak or anything. It means that you're smart. You know what I mean? And, anyways, this dude, Nilo Wafer, ended up teaching me so much stuff. And he became, like, my best friend, man. He became, like, literally my best friend at this point. And it, it just goes to show, dude, it just... It's like, it depends on how you take situations and how you treat them. For me personally, how, like, how I deal with douchebags is I don't take it personally. And the thing that reminded me of this is I was talking to a few subscribers the other day. And um, one of them was like mad at their dad. And another one of them was mad at one of their friends. And I had talked to another guy who was like hated this kid at school. And it's like, don't take it personally. Like, there's so many. And you can see it even in the comment section on YouTube. Like, people will post a video and another person will come in and be like, well, I really don't agree with this. You, you wrong. You're such a douchebag. Uh, I hate you. Blah blah. And it's like, dude, don't take it so personally. And I feel like as you grow older, you start to kind of um, take a step back and look at it from a third-party perspective. Because um, definitely, when you're younger, you really want to like fight for stuff and be like, um, "Wow, this is affecting me." When it's not necessarily the case, you know. And as far as I'm concerned, everybody in life is just a character, dude. Like, when I started looking at Nilla Wafer, instead of looking at Nilla Wafer and acting like he was just a big jerk to me, I looked at him, I was like, he's just some dude who, you know, maybe wants a little bit of respect and doesn't get it, and he's good at what he's, he does, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him a little bit of respect, and I'm gonna ask him for, for knowledge. And I did that, and instead of, like, taking it, like, and getting offended every time he was mean, I was like, I just brushed it off, and I was like, yo, teach me this, man. And everybody is just a character, dude. Like, if you look at it, like, if you watch a TV show and there's a douchebags in a TV show or on a cartoon or whatever, you don't get offended by that, right? You just watch it. And that's how you have to treat life sometimes. You have to look at people like, oh, it's just another character in this freaking show of life. No big deal. I can handle this. It's not a big deal, dude. And that's really how you have to... Um, consider things, man. People are freaking beautiful, man. And I love people. I, I love, I love everybody, dude. Whether you're, wh whether you're a huge douche or you're the nicest guy ever or you're a mean girl or a uh, freaking gigantic fat girl that's sweet. Like, I love everybody. You could be the ugliest guy in the world and I will still be your friend because I just love people in general. And you have to do that, man. You have to look at everybody like they're a character. If somebody's upsetting you, it's just a character. Like, everybody, for example, hated my old boss. Everybody and he knows it too and like I liked him though because I could kind of sympathize with him I was like he was just trying to get his job done, but he was kind of mean to everybody um, a lot of times But he's the coolest guy man like I personally really liked him. I really liked him and um, A lot of people just don't because he's so by the book and had no leniency and for me like when I went in there Even though yeah, he was sometimes strict with stuff or sometimes kind of snappy or whatever I was like, you know what? He's just another character in my life. I'm gonna just kind of take a step back and what rather than taking it personally i just kind of like was like that's so funny that he's he's like a grouchy mr krabs like that's what we all call him we was like he's just like mr krabs because he would do anything to get that dollar dollar bill y'all and he was just so strict and funny dude and after i stopped taking it personally and started like just enjoying him um it just makes life so much better dude and that's one way to have a more positive outlook on stuff stop taking stuff personally man um and start being like start appreciating all the little quirky people in life and that is the story for today you guys i think that's pretty good um go ahead and leave a like on this let's try to let's shoot for 400 likes that's the goal for today so go ahead and check out the like bar check it out is there 400 likes yet if not then leave a like even if there is leave a like man and if you made it to the end of the video go ahead and say um go ahead and say you douchebag in the comment section below i love you guys a ton you guys are absolutely beautiful i hope that you enjoyed this story man i definitely enjoyed telling it and I think that it was really good, man. I think that it was like, uh, it kind of, you know, it wasn't the cleanest of stories. You know, I kind of broke off a trail off here and there. But I think it has a good message. So definitely leave the likes on that. I would appreciate it, man. And I love you guys a ton. And I am over and out.